Hi, today we are going to talk about even and odd functions. Let's start with an even function. A function is going to be even if for every x in its domain the following is going to be true. f of negative x is going to be the same as f of x. What does it mean uh, on the graph? If you think about x being some value on the, the, x um, on the x axis and negative x will be the opposite of it. That means if you use two opposite values and evaluate the function at the, those two points, the function's value is actually going to be the same. So this is what f of x is, this is what negative f of x is, they are the same. This function is going to be even. Uh, one feature of the graphs is that they are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. You have line symmetry. If you look at this graph, it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. A function is going to be odd if for every val x in its domain this expression is going to be true. That says that f of negative x is going to equal to the negative f of x, which means the opposite of f of x. If you look at this graph, this is x, this is f of x, and if you take negative x, you're going to get the opposite. So, if you're using the opposite value of x, you're going to get the opposite value of y. This function is going to be odd. Functions like that are always, their graphs are always going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. This is what we call point symmetry, or it can also be obtained by rotating 180 degrees. And the graph may look like this. Now, you need to be careful with the, uh, one thing. Just because a graph is symmetric does not mean it's going to be necessarily even or odd. The uh, even functions are going to need to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. This graph here appears to be symmetric with respect to the line x equals negative 1. It may be symmetric, but it's not going to be even because it's not symmetric with respect to the y-axis. This graph may appear to be symmetric with respect to a point. Um, you may have a rotational symmetry here, but this uh, graph does not represent an odd function because this graph is not symmetric with respect to the origin. So be very careful when you look at graphs. First thing we're going to do is how do we determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. Uh, you are always going to do the same thing. You are going to set up f of negative x or whatever the function is and you're going to see what's going to come out. So if we do f of negative x that means x is going to be replaced with negative x and this is going to be our expression because negative x squared is going to produce x squared the negative is going to disappear plus 4 this is actually our original function. That means that f of negative x right here, is equal to f of x, which is what we want to see in an even function. This function is even. g of x. You start the same exact way. g of negative x is going to be neg uh, sorry, 2 times negative x cubed minus 4 times negative x. This will require a little bit of work negative x cubed because the degree is odd this negative will stay and you can move it outside which is going to be negative 2x cubed minus 4x times negative x is going to be plus 4x this is not the original function but if you factor out negative 1 you are going to get in parentheses 2x cubed minus 4x so this is the opposite of our function it's negative g of x. This function is going to be odd. Next one, I'm going to do h of negative x. It's going to be negative x squared minus 2 times negative x minus 7. Let's see what we are getting here. Even degree, the negative was going to disappear, so it's going to be x squared. Negative 2 times negative x is going to give us plus 2x. And then you have minus 7. Clearly not the original function, nor this is the opposite of our function. The opposite of this function will be negative x squared plus 2x plus 7. That's not what you have here. So it does not equal h of x. 
and it does not equal h, uh, negative h of x. So this one will be neither even nor odd. Oftentimes we just say short neither. Let's take a look at more examples. Example 4, we got this function. So let's do f of negative x. We have negative x to the fourth minus 3 negative x squared minus 1. Even degree here, the negative will cancel. Negative degree here, that negative is going to cancel. So you're going to have negative 3x squared minus 1. This looks like the original function. And this function is going to be even. Example 5. So we're going to do g of negative x, which is going to be negative x cubed minus negative x squared plus 3. So this degree is odd, negative will stay. This degree is even, it's going to cancel. This, this negative is going to cancel, this negative is going to stay. So minus x squared plus 3. That's not g of x and it's not the opposite g of x. It's neither even nor odd. Cube root of x cubed minus 7x. Now you have to be very careful here how you handle this. So it's going to be cube root of negative x cubed minus 7 times negative x. So what are we going to have here? It's going to be the cube root of odd degree, the negative stays. This one's going to give us plus 7x. So at first it doesn't look like anything, but if I factor out negative 1, and then I'm going to have x cubed minus 7x, the cube root of negative 1, you can actually do it, and it's negative 1, which means if you take the cube root of negative 1, it's going to leave you with negative 1 outside, and inside you're going to have x cubed minus 7x. This is the opposite of h of x, and this function is odd. How about f of x? Well, this one's a little bit tricky. You need to know how to properly handle that. So what happens here? If I'm going to replace x with negative x, so then it's negative x minus 2, right? But you, uh, you can't just get rid of the negatives because it's actually not necessarily going to be the negative value. So what do we know? We can take the negative out, so it's not going to be the opposite of the original function, and it's certainly not the same function as this one was. Please don't assume anything about the absolute value here. So this is not f of x, and it's not negative f of x. This one is going to be neither. All right, let's move to something a little bit more conceptual. Here's the question. Uh, f of x is an even function. Uh, point negative 5, 7 lies on the graph of f of x, uh, meaning that f of negative 5 is 7. What other point can you uh, find that also lies on the graph of f of x? We know the function is even, that means that f of negative x is going to equal f of x. So that means that f of negative 5 is going to equal to f of 5. Right? And we know what this value is. This is 7. That means that f of 5, the opposite, because we're using the opposite coordinate here for x, is going to be the same. So the other point is going to be positive 5, 7. g of x is an odd function. Point 2, negative 3 lies on its graph, meaning that g of 2 is negative 3. What other point can you find that also lies on the graph of g of x? So, uh, what do we know about odd functions? We know for an odd function, g of an opposite value is going to be the opposite of the original, which means if I want to find g of negative 2, it's actually going to be the opposite of g of 2. We know g of 2 is negative 3, correct? That means g of negative 2 is going to be the opposite of negative 3, and it's going to be positive 3. 
our point will be negative 2, 3. And when you do problems like numbers 8 and 9 and actually two more that are coming up, you have to understand one thing. You have very limited information about um, a function. You know that the function is even in question 8 and odd in question 9 and the, all you have is one point. So you do not have like a, a, an equation that you can substitute the value into. And the only thing you can base it on is uh, the definition of what an even function is and what an odd function is. So what we have here is the table. We know that h of x is an even function and we need to find missing values. Well, let's take a good look. So if the function is even, the opposite values of x will produce the same number. We have x is negative 5 here and x is 5 here, which means their values here, the y values, will be the same. Okay? Here we have 1 and negative 1, so opposite values also, and the, va the y value is going to be the same. What do we have here? We don't know what the x-coordinate is, but we know that the y-coordinates are the same. So while there may be multiple points like that, we can safely assume that this has to be 3 because we don't know anything else. Let's take a look at 11. k is a not function. Find the missing values. So let's see what we know here. We have 8, negative 3. Well, actually, let's start with this. We have 4, 6, and we have negative 4. So these are the opposite values of x, and you're going to get the opposite values of y. So this one's going to be negative 6. Right? Uh, the other ones, well, let's see. We have a value of 3, and we have a value of negative 3. That means that these x values would probably ha be opposite also. And this would be 8. And the same thing here, negative 5 and 5. You can safely assume that this could potentially be 2. And the last few questions that we, um, last few examples that we have here is uh, showing how you, if you know half the graph of an even or an odd function, how you can construct the rest of it. So we know this function is even. And half of the graph is given to us and we want to reconstruct the rest of it. So what do we do? We know that the, since the function is even, it's going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And we're just going to start reflecting our point. This point stays here. This point moves over here. This point here is going to go to negative 5. This point here is going to be 8, 1 is going to be negative 8, 1. And this point here is 9, uh, 4. It's going to be negative 9, 4. So we're simply using symmetry here. All right, and all you need to do now is connect them in the same manner. And now you have a full graph of this function. And please note it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Our next function is going to be odd. So again, half the graph is given, and we want to reconstruct the rest of the graph. So we're going to get the other half. Now we're going to do a rotational symmetry, a reflection about the point. So this point here is going to move over here. This point here is going to move. So basically what you do is you change the x and the y coordinates. So this was negative 5, this is 5, 4. It will be negative 5, negative 4. This here is 8, 1. It will be negative 8, negative 1. And this one is 10, 5. It will be negative 10, negative 5. And then you connect them. Now you can see that your graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. I do have to show you one more example and warn you about one possible mistake. So you need to be careful. Uh, one thing that uh, was true about the previous graph that it will pass through the origin. And when it passes through the origin, the point, uh, the origin itself, the point there will reflect onto itself. But what you have over here is a situation like that. So you can't just look at this point as your focal point and kind of rotate everything about that because the rotation is going to have to happen around that point. This is your uh, point of symmetry. So what do we do? We reflect everything over that point. So that point here is going to move over here and please note it's actually an open circle here. 
this point here is gonna go right there this point here at 5 1 is gonna go to negative 5 negative 1 8 2 is gonna go to negative 8 negative 2 and 10 5 will go to negative 10 negative 5 right and then you're going to connect it and one thing that you need to understand about this graph let me connect it first this graph is actually has uh, is, is going to have uh, this continuity at zero this is the only way this can be done uh, to make this graph happen and over here it's uh, there's a jump and uh, but that's the graph hope this helps